everybody. Thanks for joining me today. I want you to let me know where you're from and uh, how long you've been playing the oud for. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, my oud course, Easy Oud Songs. Um, I'm going to listen to some music here, going to teach a little bit of this song, um, Yamal Al Sham, and um, or Yamal Sham, and uh, we're going to talk a bit about um, some cool modulations you got in it as well. <laughs> Enjoying how this oud is sounding today. Well, I'm going to show you something fun. New addition to the to the crowd here. has some hoops very very cool instrument um, it's made to support nylon strings at the bottom here and also comes with a pickup K and K pickup which I have taken off right now um, also has a skin top these hoops make it easy to hold that's why um, that's why I like it so much it has a very nice thick ebony fingerboard all the way down and uh, beautiful cherry, I believe it's cherry uh, hoops and um, neck and uh, very easy to tune with all these uh, beautiful geared tuners, I love that. Um, that's very nice and it's got a nice warm resonant sound. <laughs> Same thing as the oud, you know, up here is the neck joint area where you've got your G, G note. Same tuning as Arabic oud, we've got C, G, D, A, F, and C. And um, yeah, so nothing's uh, very different here. Alright, so today we're going to talk about uh, easy oud songs. Got um, today. Uh, this weekend got a promo going on for my Easy Oud Songs course. Um, some bonuses. Uh, enrollment is closing at Sunday at midnight. 
um, so you won't be able to get the course after that um, this weekend only um, we are throwing in some bonus songs some bonus easy oud songs I'll tell you what those are uh, right here Ala Dauna um, in a very uh, easy arrangement uh, to play another tune called Beladi and then Wayne Aina Ramala um, these three songs are going to be added um, and they're only available, uh, the whole course is only available until August 22nd uh, at midnight. So, um, and also, um, if you're one of the lucky first people to enroll, uh, you'll uh, receive free 25-minute co coaching session with me over Zoom. I'll give you personal feedback so we can tackle any bad habits and give you personalized tips and exercises just for you. Um, and of course, you can ask me any questions in that, uh, in that coaching session. Um, so yeah, it, I think there's still a couple more um, opportunities to get that. So if you don't delay, uh, the first five people will get uh, the free coaching. And that uh, all closes at uh, Sunday at midnight. Sunday, your time, Pacific. All right, I'll uh, send a link here in the chat. All right, hello everyone. All right. Thanks for joining. Hey, Nicholas, thanks for uh, joining the foundation program. Carol, nice to see you again, as usual. All right, glad you're enjoying everything. Okay, uh, let's get to learning this song. I'm gonna show you the first main melody of this piece. Uh, the first piece here, so we've got um, starting up on the high C string. And let me show you the notes, get the notes going for you. Here we go. Okay, here it is. Okay, so I've written it very easy. You can use uh, downstrokes for most of this. And uh, so we have the notes. Let's look at the first measure. We've got a half half uh, beat rest on the first first beat. So we have one do do si do si la. Um, this would be C C B C B A, and we have B half flat. So you got to use your pinky finger. The B half flat is just. The, the way that you find it is you have to find your B flat with your third finger right here. This is my B flat. Now, if you want to find the B half flat, you just got to squeeze your pinky to the right of your third finger there. And you've got the approximate zone of B half flat. So the first measure, one, two, three, four, one. Just like that. Very nice and easy. Just down strokes. Then the second measure, B half flat, C, C, B, A, G. So we got one, two, and three, and four. All right, so the first measure and the second measure together, we've got one, two, three, four, one. So it's very important that you come in on the end of one. One. And then the rest should be pretty easy. We've got one and two and three and four. So we got C, A, A, G, G, F, E, D. And this is an E half flat. The way that you find this note on the fingerboard, if you're not familiar with it yet, is that you find your F note. It's easy to find the F note with your third finger. You know, you've got one, two, three finger steps to the F. And then in order to find that, you got to put your th first finger at the midway point between your third finger here and the nut, smack dab in the middle. 
that's the approximate zone. Now this is not the absolute pitch for E half flat or Mi nos bemol, uh, but that's the approximate zone for it. So we have again in measure three. This is how it sounds. Try to copy that. Mi. And then in measure four we have So we have F on the first beat, downstroke, and then G A G is down, up, down. together. I'll count four and then you join me. One, two, three, four, one. One, two, and three, and four. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and a two, and three, and four. Repeat. That's the the main melody of this song, Yamal Sham, and uh, this is how it sounds when you add a little bit of more flavor. Now it sounds perfect just like this, you know, just with the just with the basic notes. But the important thing is to emphasize the notes in the rhythm to make it sound beautiful when you play it simple. So you want to really hammer on that first do, that first C. <laughs> And then you also want to emphasize the third beat, that C there too. So you want to emphasize beat, uh, the end of beat one on the first measure, beat three on the first measure, beat one on the second measure, and beat three on the second measure. So. Then in measure three, you want to emphasize each beat. And then in measure four, you want to me emphasize beat one. And that's how you can bring out the beauty of this melody. Let's uh, just hear it again. something a little fancy in there you can add um, an extra note up from between D and F in the third and fourth and fourth measure you can go D E F like that you have to use down up if you want to do that so this note here you turn it into a 16th note D add a E and then you get into the F, so it'll be down, up, down. D, E, F, G, A, G, F, E, D, C. All right, let's uh, hear this with a bit more rhythm. So the way that I add rhythm into this piece is that I, um, I'm basically turning these eighth notes into sixteenth notes sometimes. So let's hear how that sounds. So I'm adding a whole bunch of different things there. Watch this. Um, so I'm adding Instead of down, down, I'm doing down, up, down, down, down. Then I'm adding an extra note to ornament that A. 
down, up, down. So I'm going from A to B half flat. Then instead of just a quarter note on the second measure, I'm playing, I'm just adding an eighth note there to spice it up a little bit, change it up. And then on these descending phrases here and here or here, I like to turn them into 16th notes and double them. Add B, add a C in between. From A, add another B here in between. And then land on G. So it sounds like this. Or. So you gotta do down, up, down, up. attention to the last three notes E we add a F 16th note there D we add a E 16th note there and then C all right you can also do little trills each of these notes you could add these last three F E F sorry E F E D E D C just one stroke very nice very beautiful you can add that almost anywhere I love to add this on the E half flat. It makes it sound so much uh, more beautiful when you add that hammer on pull off thing. So that is the beginning part of Yamal Isham. You can learn the whole piece in Easy Oud Songs course. So I do hope you check that out in the link on the description. Like I said, uh, some three bonus songs this weekend only, and then the course is going to be closed uh, for the time being. Um, so you won't be able to get the course after this. Um, and you get, uh, if when you buy the largest package, which is 10 songs, uh, with the bonus songs, you get extra three. So you'll be able, le able to learn 13 songs um, this weekend. And... Um, for the first five people who enroll, you get uh, the free coaching with me over Zoom. If that is something you're interested in, I think there are a couple um, spots left of that. But if you don't get in on the first five, then uh, you'll still get the free uh, songs. And of course, you can always uh, email me and ask me questions if you uh, if you have questions. Also, um, for Oud for Guitarist um, students, uh, I've got I held I hold uh, monthly office hours so uh, one hour a month um, you know, every other month we do for America time zones and uh, the other month we do for um, European time zones or Asian time zones um, so you can ask any questions you have uh, I'll be there it's completely free for all you can ask any questions you have about any of the material that we're, you're working on in the courses and uh, you know any challenges you're having um, that's what uh, the office hours are there for so yes um, if there's a few questions I think in the chat so I want to answer any questions you have about the program easy wood songs uh, the link is there you can check that out and uh, Joe asked um, about Turkish technique known as Sharpma uh, in or also in Persian music it's called tekiye. This is a really good question. I use this technique all the time in my playing. And um, so what this is is it's almost in between muting or adding it's almost like in between muting or doubling up. So what it is really in basic form just with one stroke, one down stroke. Let's uh, do it on the D note or actually let's do it on the open C string 
So all, the, all you do is bring your finger down to mute the string. There are two types of this sharp mod. One is where you you mute like this and you do it over and over. The other one is where you actually hit a, this, the note a little bit. So you may do an upstroke on it. So it's kind of like that. When you do it fast, it creates this effect of tequie or sharp ma. And um, there's different ways you can do it. So the first way that I show is the muting. And that's just by putting your finger down to mute the string. And the finger that you use is dependent on the note that you're playing and the macomb you're playing. So let's say we're playing um, just, uh, let's say, macomb bayat on D, right? Let's say we're uh, muting the C, then you would use the D note. You'd use the finger for the D note. If you're muting, if you're doing this technique on the D on the D note, then you would use your second finger or third finger on top of E half flat. Or so forth and so on, all the way up. So the fingering depends on the context. So let me show you a little exam a little exercise you can do on one string. Let's use the notes G, A flat, F, G, and we're going to use third finger on G, and we're going to do pinky on A flat. We're going to do four strokes on each, and you'll then mute with your pinky finger. Like that. One, two, three, four. Then F to G. Just muting. Then you slide down, first to third, E flat and F. Then down to D and E flat. And then C and D. So that's the first way that uh, I, I teach tekie, is to just mute the string. the effect it creates. You almost hear the note that you're muting. Uh, you almost hear it. Like The other way of doing the tekie is to actually stroke, do down, up, down, up. Like that. And so that creates basically the same effect. Um, it's just that it's a bit more aggressive sounding. Um, depending on the context and how aggressive you're playing, what kind of effect you want to create, then you would use one or the other. Um, so it depends on the context. So some tekie is very strong, where you actually stroke it. Um, others are not. Uh, there's another way of um, doing tekie where you alternate. You do, you're doing the muting, but you're doing down, up. So one, two, three, four. Sometimes. It's effective, or in some contexts you need to do down, up, down, up with the right hand. And you're just doing the muting with the finger. Yeah, it really depends on the context. Uh, I'm not sure I do it exactly the Turkish way. The Turkish way may be a bit more, have some other subtleties with it, uh, diff different technique with it. But uh, the Persian way, uh, usually it's muting, cutting off the note like that, um, or it would be doing a full stroke.
answers your question, Joe. Any other questions, please put them in the chat and I'd be happy to answer anything you have there. All right. Hi, David. Good to see you. Uh, hi, Raphael. Slu, sorry, I don't know um, what song you're referring to by Enta Malik. Um, I think that sounds familiar to me, but uh, I, I don't have it on top of my head. Yeah, so um, any questions you have, please, by all means. Uh, yes, uh, if you have the Easy Oud songs, oh, I can always add it to your account if you've already uh, enrolled previously. So yeah, just um, send me an email uh, at support at oudforguitarist.com and then I will get to you, all right? Here's my email address. So you need advice buying an oud. Um, depends. Uh, uh, if you want, you can always uh, contact me in office hours, or you could just send me an email. Um, I'd be happy to email you um, if if that if that works for you. Um, describe the situation. Um, happy to email you. So you don't need to necessarily wait for office hours to ask about that. But uh, if you need to uh, really talk about it, um, yeah, you can. Uh, come to office hours and of course ask any questions you have about that um, but you can shoot me an email to maybe maybe I can answer your question in an email all right uh, any other questions so yeah um, that's my the Jumush Ud here all right uh, having an issue with the third finger constantly sticks up while playing, especially harder parts and longer pieces. Do you recommend any kind of finger strengthening exercises? All right. Sticks up. Hmm. Sticks up. What do you mean by sticking up? I'm not really sure what you mean by that. What I, um, what I recommend to really get the, str the fingers nice and straight in a line is to do some chromatic runs so another thing you can do is Another thing that I recommend people do is to allow their fingers to follow each other. So, for example, when you put down the first finger, you now the B, the, the the second finger is uh, is kind of following. Or when you put down the third finger, like all these fingers kind of follow suit and are ready to play. They're somewhere touching the strings almost. Um, the exception is with the pinky finger. The pinky finger kind of does its own thing sometimes um, so let's say when you put when you put your finger down is this happening like your fingers are shooting up is that what you mean um, kinda need to see it uh, to see what you see what you're saying it's okay that the finger shoots up as long as you can bring it down in a matter of time uh, to be used so like, does this happen? This is normal. If you're using your first finger somewhere, and you can be like this, that's fine. Your stinger finger can stick up, but it's got to come into use once uh, it's got to be able to come down to the fingerboard at some point. I hope I've answered, I hope I've uh, understood your question. Um, let's see here. Uh, Hamid Korbansad, uh, he's got great ouds. I highly recommend his work. Um, I'm going to be interviewing him on the channel, on the YouTube channel here, um, maybe maybe in the next month or so. Um, just got to make time for it. But he's agreed to do an interview with me here, and I'm going to ask him a lot of questions about his his oud making, his philosophy and stuff. So hopefully that uh, happens. Um, but I highly recommend his work. Um, Uh, hi, hi, Rachel. Nice to see you here. 
I uh, forgot how to do trills. Uh, that's a good question. Trills. Trills are two two types of trills. So let's say we're doing doing a trill on the D note with the E flat. Um, one way is to just do one pluck and then move your finger like this to make reference to the note above in the scale. The other way is to do plucking on that. speeding it up. So you gotta start slow. Like that. Alright. Question. Are E double flat and Mi coron equivalent? Same position? Okay, so the, when it comes to intonation, yes, you, you can E half flat, I usually call it E half flat or E quarter flat. Um, in Farsi, it's koron, mi koron. Koron is our half flat. Um, yes, in simple terms, yes, it's the same note. But, uh, of course, in different contexts, in, in Persian music, it might be a little bit flatter than in some contexts in Arabic music. So there's the intonation is going to be different, but the zone is the same. you got to think of this note range, this area, as a zone. Um, not so much as um, not so much as an af absolute pitch. It's a zone. It could be flatter, it could be sharper, but there's a zone here bet halfway between F and the nut of this zone. It could be sharper. In Turkish music it's often sharper. Arabic music might be a little bit flatter than that. could be uh, depending on the context. In Persian music, it might be even flatter. But it gets very specific. So you got to use your ear. And depending on what you're hearing, what you're trying to emulate, you got to use your ear to uh, sync it up. It gets very uh, complicated in Turkish music because we have, in Turkish music, there's a concept of uh, moving intonation. So the 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 microtones that they use they sometimes get sharper as you ascend the scale or you move towards certain tonal gravities um, and it gets flatter as the melody moves down the octave um, there's a there's the there's a good video I have on that um, that I've posted uh, maybe last month or so about uh, difference between microtones in Turkish music and Arabic music I went very specific um, there's every intonation in between we have it uh, so it's something you have to use your ear to uh, to really learn and you may have preferences for a certain intonation that you end up playing I know I do um, but I try my best to uh, use my ear when I can so yes it is the same position but this is a zone all right good uh, all right let's see Arctic City question here. Using a cheap lute as a beginner at the end of the fingerboard where it joins the face, the strings are about five millimeters up. Yeah, so um, so that's uh, I'll show you on an oud here. It depends. You might be able to help the action a little bit. This action here might be impossible to see, but it's about two point five maybe three millimeters not quite sure but um, there's a temporary fix you may be able to adjust how high the loop is on your oud here so that um, you'd have to adjust it so that the loop is either pulling the string up or making it flush with the with the hole that's a bit tricky to show you in this kind of video um, but I do in one of my other videos where I show you how to change the strings, I show you in detail how I adjust the action on the bridge. There's a video on my channel. Just go to the YouTube channel, search um, how to change oud strings, and there's two videos there. The The older video is the one where I have, um, a I show the close-up close to the bridge and how I carefully adjust the action a little bit. It's not going to get you much improvement, unfortunately but it can help potentially it depends on the on how bad it is 
Um, another thing you might uh, want to try is seeing how high the nut is. If the nut is very high, it, you could gain, gain some benefits by reducing the height of the nut. But uh, you really have to talk to a luthier um, to see what you can do. Um, that's tri tricky. It, unfortunately, with uh, some ouds, there's no temporary fix. But uh, your best bet is with the bridge. Um, you may, if you're if you're adventurous, you may want to try experimenting with how you tie the the string to the bridge. You may be able to get the string to, uh, let's say, you tie a knot at the back of the bridge here, and then feed the string in directly. Then you might be able to. Uh, reduce some of the action. It's hard to describe in this kind of video. Um, I'd have to take more time uh, to describe that, but I don't know how, how well that will work because um, it's not designed for that kind of a configuration. Um, so yeah, so you, that's might be your best bet. Um, also, you might want to um, use the uh, tune the oud lower so that the tension is not so high. Maybe that will help. I'm not so sure. Maybe you want to tune down half a step or a full step. May help, may not help. Unfortunately, that's a tricky thing with ouds. Once the action is bad, usually it requires a significant, um, significant kind of uh, thing to fix it. All right. Any questions um, about uh, easy oud songs course? Um, you know, get a lot of questions about like, you know, are these really, you know, how long does it take to see results? Everybody's different. Everybody learns at a different pace. But I think you should be able to learn like one song a week if you practice at least 30 minutes a day. It may take longer if you ha don't have that much time to practice. Um, but everybody's different, right? Um, uh, if it doesn't work for you, um, I always offer a, offer a 60 day money back guarantee in case you're not happy with the course. So I always offer that. Um, if you don't have much time to spend on it right now, like let's say you want to get in on the course, but you're worried that uh, you know uh, you don't have time for it right now, maybe next month you have more time to practice, uh, there's lifetime access to the course materials. So if you don't have time, you can always jump in later. Um, if, you, if you've been playing f six, uh, six months or to a year, um, then this would be a good course for you. Um, it's like I said I've watered down the song so that uh, it it's true to the melody of the songs but it's not too difficult for you and if you're not sure you can always email me at the email in the chat support at oodforguitarist.com uh, send me a video clip of your playing or an audio clip of your playing I can tell whether your this course would be good for you or not um, yeah so those are some some of the questions people tend to ask um, about the course uh, that's it for me today I'm really happy that you guys uh, came out um, if you guys have any last minute questions now is the time to ask them get them in the chat otherwise uh, see you next time all right face the guitar stand in music stores um, you can see here in the background it's hard to see this isn't it okay you can see that that's the best way that I can get the wood to stand on the guitar stand um, depending on the shape of the bowl um, it won't fit in a guitar stand really well, so you gotta put it backwards on it. That's how I do it, anyway. Um, that might be one reason. 
And if you get a special, specially made uh, oud stand, then you could have the face, you know, outwards like this. This oud actually, actually does stand like that, uh, but it's safer. You just put the face toward the stand. Good question. Any last questions? Let's see here. Yeah, that's tricky. Uh, problems playing in front of people. Everybody has problems playing in front of people. Uh, you just have to do it more and more and more and more and more and more until you desensitize yourself and you get used to playing in front of people. Um, I'm the same. Everybody is there, you know. Um, yeah, exactly what Arctic Cry says. Exactly. You just got to keep doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like that too. Um, you know, uh, I still it's like when I do these YouTube lives uh, I'm all in my head and I've got lots of uh, things going on that I wanted to tell people share with people so like I, I put the music in front of me too so that I can remember something of what I'm doing and you know like uh, I completely forget stuff too and blank out it takes a lot of uh, takes a lot of practice to actually get uh, rehearsed so that you can put on a show um, in these days myself in particular I'm pretty out of practice with that um, so it just takes practice you just got to do it more and more and um, be prepared and really know everything back to back um, but sometimes nerves just take over and you just you know get in front of people and you forget everything so it just uh, you just got to keep doing it more uh, use people use your family members as guinea pigs just uh, you know, if they're, if they're in the living room, uh, you know, just play in front of them, and that might help. So again, if you guys have any last-minute questions, now's the time. Otherwise, I'm out of here. Let's see, we're gonna give another minute, and that's it. decent stands for ouds they're a bit a bit pricey but yeah all right thanks guys thanks for joining uh check out easy oud songs i'll put the link in the chat again uh, link should be in the description as well check it out um let me know if you have any questions again thanks so much for joining me always uh, happy to see your questions and happy to see you guys on here uh, if you guys have any suggestions on what kind of other content you want to see i'm always open to suggestions uh, put them on the back burner and get to them at some point all right, thanks so much. Uh, have a good rest of your evening or day or wherever you are. Thanks. Bye.